Hello, trim. Delaware will go left to right. It's Jeffers, Guinness to jump it off. And we are underway from the bob with Guinness tipping it to his teammate, Denzel Ingram. First possession for UNCW. And it's Bryce, the freshman, a deep two, and that's a miss. That's what Delaware wants in the scouting report. UNCW sets a lot of ball screens. They love to utilize them early on in the shot clock as well, and we'll take that jumper off of it. On the run, it's Champ Mosley who misses. UNCW coming up the floor. Both teams missing their first shot. But I like the attack by Champ Mosley on the first possession for UNCW. No score, 19-27. First half, second possession for UNCW. They go inside to Getty. He's the big man, seven-footer with a right hand to hook. That strong back iron rebounded by Marvin King Davis. Good defensive rebound outside his area by Marvin King Davis. Mo Jefferts did a nice job there of contesting Gettis. We've got to be sure we push him off the block so every one of his attacks comes at a difficult angle or with multiple dribbles. Here's King Davis on the offensive end. Baseline. Right side. Backing down low. Fades. Over defender. Jump shot. Rattles through and NKD gets the scoring going. Marvin King Davis has the height advantage and a little bit of the offensive savvy advantage over Flemings who was trying to guard him down on the low block. A great turnaround jumper to get some space. Here's Bryce. Kicks out to his teammate Jordan Talley. Delaware up 2 nothing. 18-40 first half. Flemings on the drive. Off balance and a traveling violation. That's Chris Flemings usually coming off the bench, but he does lead the team in scoring this season. Flemings attacking the lane via his right-hand dribble. Kasman Hayes, the defender on the play, did a great job of leveling off Flemings and forcing the walk. Too fast to dribble by Flemings, but better defense by Kasman Hayes. Full court pressure by UNCW. How about Mo Jeffers taking the ball up himself, trying to get to Corey Holden. Holden was defended well, and uh, Big Mo up the floor. He went to break the pressure and get it across the timer. Now it's Mosley to Holden up top straight away. Tally on him. Off the curl. Hayes on the wing to Jeffers at the foul line. Trying to get down low to King Davis. Instead, it's Mosley with five. A couple crossover moves. Trying to squeeze it between a couple of defenders, and it's knocked around and out of bounds, UNCW, with the basketball turnover for champ. Anthony Mosley just getting a little too deep. If he had jump stopped three feet earlier, he had Marvin King Davis on the right block. A good job there by the UNCW defense to step in and level off Mosley as he attacked. But, again, I like Delaware's aggressiveness early on. That was a great set play and two good decisions by Kasman Hayes and Mo Jeffers to pass up wide open shots. Now it's Geddes. He missed from the right, from the left side. Now the right side off the window and in. And we could see the replay on Henzel Axis last possession. It was actually a foul called on Anthony Mosley, a charge. Still a turnover, but one foul for Anthony Mosley. Now the ball knocked out of his hands. Another turnover for Champ as UNCW takes away on the full court pressure. It's Denzel Ingram to Flemings on the wing left side. Marvin King Davis will defend. Flemings with a crossover, attacking, and a bumping foul going to go against Delaware. Their second, and it'll be Corey Holden calling for his first. Corey Holden was the defender on the left baseline, and as Flemings attacked, he didn't get his body fully in front of Flemings. I think he had an opportunity to. He also had a shot blocker and Mo Jeffers sitting on the inside hip. So you never want to foul that driver, especially when someone as capable as Mo Jeffers, who I think has done a really nice job throughout the season of defending the backboard via his block shot attempts and or effects. Fleming's at the free throw line. Very good free throw shooter at 80%. I love the cockpit. We've got cutouts of Joe Biden. I see Drake, Kanye West. Making it difficult for Fleming who splits the pair. 3-2 is the lead for UNCW. But a good turnout by the student section, as we've expected here at the Bob over the years. Reminds me of that Arizona State uh, end hey, zone, not too. Not quite at that level, w which I love. ASU now will foul away from the ball. And another turnover. That one going to go against Maurice Jeffers. That's his first third on Delaware. And most had some struggles this season. Tied with Corey Holden for the team high per game with turnovers. You don't find that often for a big man, but... That offensive foul counts as a turnover. It was an attempt to post up just a little too physical down the right block. He's just got to use his positioning, his footwork over his just outright power. UNCW up 3-2 to two with the basketball, 17-07, first half, and it's tally on top. A jump shot by Bryce. He missed from the left side, now missing from the right, and a rebound for Champ Mosley. Across to Hayes and deflected, saved. Inbounds, UNCW cannot come away with it, but you got to love the effort if you're Kevin Keats from his ball club. Nearly the fourth turnover 
by the hands. When they play, because they play so many people, they can play a little bit faster than most teams. Great hustle, though, in front of their bench, trying to save the ball and bounds. Mosley's got to watch that cross-court pass, especially against defenders that are trailing and very closely aligned to their defensive assignment. UNCW did possess the basketball while trying to save it, so a reset shot clock for Delaware. Here's Holden. Deep right side. Not scoring the first half against Northeastern. Ended with 14. Taps his shoulder. Play call is made by the point guard from Salzburg. Deep right side. 13 to shoot. Brings it left off the screen from Jeffers. All the way around. Circling. And a whistle is on the floor. Corey almost picked up his second, I think, because he extended that arm on the offensive end. But the foul will go against UNCW. And that's the first on the Seahawks. Holden did a nice job of getting to his left hand and attacking Tally, who was not in a good guarding position. But C.J. Geddes is doing a really nice job of trying to help out on any sort of drive attempts by both Mosley and Holden. A heave by Hayes leads to the NW rebound and down the floor. A quick shot. And back to Delaware after the miss. 3-2, Seahawks lead by one. Only points of the game have come on a jumper from Marvin King Davis for Delaware. A layup by Geddes and a foul shot by Flemings for UNCW. 16 to shoot, four minutes in for Delaware. Next whistle will bring us to a timeout. Inside out dribble, now a crossover. Holden to his left as he was coming down from his jump. He let it go and it hit the side of the backboard. So back to UNCW. Here's Tally. Hesitation to the paint. Off the window, off the mark. And a tip out by Jeffers. Lands in the hands of the shooter, Jordan Tally. He'll reset with 26. Good defense there by Kasman Hayes. Cutting off the angle. But Mo Jeffers has got to secure that ball with two hands. Now a bank shot, I believe, from the side of the court. It counts for three anyway. You slice it. Six points to two. UNW in the lead. Now here's a little zone trap, and Flemings gets caught for a bump 80-some feet away from the basket. Not a good foul by UNCW, but Delaware's got to be sure they have enough players left. They're holding or Hayes if he has it. And at the offensive end, UNCW made a concerted effort to go directly to him on two of the first three possessions. Now back in action, 15-21, first half. Craig Ponder in the game for UNCW, fifth-year senior. Also Chuck Agbodo. As we let you know, UNCW will have several players play in today's game. And now a turnover, and King Davis didn't help himself. Instead of just getting back on defense, he raced for the UNCW player who got the steal and bumped into him. That's his first foul, but the team's fourth already. Delaware is using multiple elbow posts up there. They went to Mo Jeffers, who then threw it across to Marvin King Davis. Couldn't get a second hand in quick enough, and you're right. Marvin's just got to sprint back and defend the lane on that. UNCW, jab step, Flemings in the paint, leaves his feet, kicks it out. Now inside, Chuck Ogbodo misses in close. Good defense by Delaware after the quick pass inside. Now Mosley on the other end, 25 to shoot for Delaware, and he brings it right to left. Looking for Holden, dribble handoff to the sophomore. He's skipping around the perimeter between the circles now. Fleming's in defense, 15 to shoot. Holden right side, gets to, to Pinkert who checks in for the first time. Elbow left, it's Jeffers. Jab step on a photo. Now King Davis with seven. Top of the key. And the jumper from two is strong. Long rebound. Tracked down by UNCW and saved along the baseline to Ponder. Ponder running the floor, trying to drop it inside for Ogbodo. Jeffers got back on D and knocked it away. It'll stay with the Seahawks. Though we did not score on that last possession, I love the fact that we were running a set play. We ran it through its continuity. Marvin took the shot at five. I think we still had a chance to put it on the floor, but that was good execution of our offense. It just unfortunately didn't yield the basketball. That's what you've got to do, and I think from Delaware's standpoint, is run a few more set plays, and eventually we're going to start to yield some results from that. Mark Matthews checks in. Quick off the inbound. Flemings mixed one in close, but got his hand on the putback. And it's now 8-2 to two, UNCW. And here comes the pressure again from the Seahawks. Pinkert gets it up. Has numbers. King Davis went up for the dunk. And Agbodo stopped him. But Chuck Agbodo, the junior from Nigeria, picks up his first. And King Davis will go to line. Second foul from the Seahawks. UNCW will press in a variety of ways. Every time they score, there's a dead ball at full court. One of the problems is when you press, eventually the other team begins to figure it out. They get the angles right. And an excellent pass there by Devon Pinkard to a sprinting Marvin King Davis. The bounce pass was the perfect choice. Marvin goes up for the dunk, and Agbodo fouls him. King Davis' free throw is good. Those are the, that's the first point for Delaware in 4 minutes, 52 seconds. It was King Davis with a turnaround jumper from the right side. He gets the scoring started, but an 8-0 run for UNCW. 
Puts the score at 8-3 to three now. Second free throw coming up for King Davis. 73% on the year from the senior from Richmond. And he makes them both. Well, the four turnovers have obviously affected the offense. A little bit of it has been the distraction of UNCW's defense. But I think Delaware now needs to just settle down, defend at this end. You'll see him open up here in a zone. They've been playing man for every other possession in the 3-2 zone. Now holding Mosley on top of that zone. As Trey Grundy, Mark Matthews in the game for UNCW. Averaging seven points per game combined. Chuck Ogboto turns inside the paint. Misses and a rebound for a very good rebound and guard. Hasman Hayes, second leading rebounder on the team at six per game. That is not Ogboto's strength is that mid-range shot. He needs to be right around the basket. Here's Holden with 18 deep right. Use the screen from King Davis. Loops left, gets inside, layup off the mark. Tip to Pinker. Pinker up strong. He can't finish at the rim, but that's because he was fouled. And Devon Pinker will shoot two free throws, a 90% shooter on the year. And a nice job there by Marvin King Davis on the offensive rebound that he could not secure himself. He tipped it to his partner, Devon Pinker, who then goes up strongly. And you've got to remember, Pinker is coming off of that foot injury, and you never feel comfortable in and around people when you have to do that two-footed jump. But I like the fact he was in there challenging and using his body, which is much improved. Pinker makes a free throw, so Delaware's only made one from the field, one of six, but they've made their first three free throws of the game as Pinker trying to get himself back into rhythm, as you mentioned. Sometimes going to the free throw line can help that, and... Uh, don't want that one back. That was an air ball from the free throw line. The rare free throw line air ball from Devon Pink. One of the interesting things about UNCW is for a pressing team, they do not foul very often. And that's something I think will be interesting to see how closely the officials will call the game because UNCW loves to press their advantage on that. We'll take a lot of chances until the officials start to rein them in. Here's Ponder. Floater left. That's a fifth-year senior getting... In the scoring action, 10-5 is the count. UNCW leads 13-0-2 first half. And Mosley calling off his teammates, going to walk it up the floor himself. Jordan Talley, good defense by him. But across the timer goes Mosley, 21 to shoot as he brings it right side. Now left, Mosley using his left. But his shot was blocked. It went out of bounds along the baseline. Still plenty on the clock, 15 as they inbound. Mosley's had a lot of success of getting to the basket. The problem is, since Delaware is not able to space the court on some of those penetrations, the lane is congested. That allows him not to be able to get an angle to the basket. He'd be better off withdrawing the ball or shooting the mid-range shot. Ball poked out of the hands of Marvin King Davis. Now a steal on the other end. Ponder gets in close, misses. Gettys can't get the putback dunk. And the other way, the Hens have numbers. You and Subby with a steal, though. Good poke out. And here we go the other way. Matthews finally finishes the play with the layup on the left side. It's 12-5 UNCW. Unfortunately, that was just a bad choice of the pass by Mosley. It should have been a bounce pass to Pinkert who would have laid it in. Instead, Delaware trails now by seven. Largest lead for UNCW. Early stages, 12-11 first half, but again, Delaware getting down early for the third straight game. Hayes ahead fake. Into the paint he goes, and Gettys is there. Didn't get the block quite, but really adjusted the shot of Hayes, and it's a miss. Ponder down the floor, gets to the rim, lays it up with the reverse, and Delaware needs and will take a timeout. 14-5, to you and Hens have looked like they're not putting up much of a fight defensively. NW some easy buckets, or at least they made them look easy so far. And part of the problem is they've had some bad turnovers, and those are turnovers that occur where it allows the other team to immediately attack you and you can't get your defense set up. There have been three of those already, plus UNCW has 10 points in the paint already on dribble penetrations and also Geddes inside. Here's Jeffers challenging Geddes and throws it way too close for Mosley to handle as he went back door along the baseline. Bad spacing and turnover number seven for Delaware, number two for Mo Jeffers. Matthew squares, fires, hits. That's Mark Matthews who averages just four points per game. That's only his fourth three-pointer made on the season in 16 tries. But the Seahawks lead 17-5. to five. Well, Matthews was wide open on the left wing because Delaware had to hedge in the lane due to Geddes' pick and roll, and we're aggressively hedging it up top, which forces 
a rotation on the backside. Matthews not known as a three-point shooter, but a good look because he was spaced perfectly. Now Holden trying to get it to Jeffers. Miscommunication on a wraparound pass. Another steal, another turnover, another run out, and Matthews' shot is rejected by Hayes, but Dennis puts it back up and through. It is now 19-5, to and Delaware is not helping themselves on offense with eight turnovers. Now a foul by Grundy, a little hand check, and that maybe will slow things up and allow Delaware to get it together because right now they are out of sync. You are right. We are playing too fast. The press, even though it hasn't created a lot of turnovers in the backcourt, has forced us to play a little fast. We made, unfortunately, some bad decisions in the type of pass to use. I recommend sometimes, instead of trying to attack right away, withdraw the ball, run your offense. We had actually done a good job of that, but we can't get sped up here. A, we don't have as long a bench, and B, it's playing right now into the hands of UNCW. We're playing too fast and making bad decisions. Here's Mosley. Hayes a three. Delaware needs it. Rattles out. Hens have scored three free throws in the last seven minutes. It's an 11-0 run. Make it 13 for UNCW as Flemings gets deep inside and more points in the paint. That's 14 points in the paint for UNCW. The other way, Mosley in the paint. High lob to King Davis, and Marvin's got seven points for Delaware. Matthews with an answer on the other end, though, quieting what was an exciting crowd for just a few seconds. 24-7 to 7 is the count. Because UNCW has this big early lead based on most of the turnovers and just erratic play by Delaware, some of these shooters that don't normally feel so comfortable with that kind of lead, they just go ahead and take it and they get in a better rhythm. Everyone in rhythm against Delaware in conference play, as it is seen. Now a reaching foul on Gettys. As Mosley goes into King Davis. Marvin, correction, six points. Delaware with seven. He has six of Delaware's seven. And he's two of three from the field. The only two makes the rest of the team is O of nine. It's important that Delaware gets a good shot every time down. They've got to get back on defense and defend the basket. Too many scores in the paint. But also, don't be in a hurry offensively. Work the ball inside to Mo Jeffers, kick it back out when he's in. Now we've got him out of the, the game right now, but let's work toward the matchup advantage, which is Marvin King Davis. Mosley through the lane, saw the crease, and got inside. First field goal for Champ Mosley. Delaware down 24-9, to 9.07 first half. Now it's Bryce, the starter, freshman, two-time CAA Rookie of the Week with the basketball. He passes to the transfer, Denzel Ingram. Ingram, corner to Flemings. Flemings with five of UNCW's points. Newly inserted, Bryant taking it right to Marvin King Davis off the window and in. It's 26-9 to nine Seahawks. Well, Marvin King Davis didn't have the proper angle. He's got to be able to cut off that access to the basket, even though it was the weak hand. Nearly another turnover, and it is a cross-court pass by Mosley, and it's Brian, who gets the steal down the floor to Bryce, excuse me. He scoops one in for the layup, and it is going all wrong for Delaware in this first half. 28-9 to nine on your home floor. Just 11 and a half minutes in. Sometimes coaches love to wait for that media timeout. I'm a believer in utilize your timeouts early on to try to keep the game within reach because if you save them to the end and you're down 20, it's not going to do you any good anyway. We're just completely out of sync. Need to be slowed down, get back into the game plan, and start executing. And the foul after this deal was on Corey Holden. He's got two now. Delaware with five team fouls. Delaware nine turnovers. That was the key that Monte gave us. Points in the paint, 12 for UNCW to none for Delaware. That was a key. Now it's holding. Baseline, and he's fouled on the dribble drive. C.J. Bryce reached it. Well, that was a play in which Corey Holden may have dribbled the ball 23 or 24 <laughs> times. Uh, they are picking him up and being very aggressive. Uh, sometimes when that's happening, just give the ball up and then run Corey off of some weak side screens. Though, having said that, Corey is very clever with the ball, and he can do that but we've got to try to get something out of it other than just perimeter dribbling. One and one for Corey Holden. He makes the front end, and that's the first free throw in conference play for Corey Holden. In the last three games, he has not gone to the free throw line. You can see him making an effort early on. He's not gotten the calls, but has made the effort to try to get fouled or at least get inside the paint 
and gets some layups and contact. He makes them both, and now the Hens in double digits with 8.06 left in the first, and we'll see Curtis McCroy in. He had, since the return of Devon Pinker, been back to the walk-on role and to the game player, but now in as he had played in non-conference with the starters. Under eight, it's Bryce. Right side to Ponder. Deep right, Ingram, corner, Flemings. UNW working the ball around the perimeter. Now they'll reverse it. Back to Flemings. He drives baseline. King Davis cuts him off, defends it well. Back out to Ingram. Foul line, he stops. McCroy cut him off. King Davis off his feet. A dribble inside two is good for Chris Flemings. A nice jumper, and it's 30-11. to 11. Seahawks lead. What freed up Flemings against Marvin King Davis was a great use of the shot fake. He's made a couple outside shots. Marvin a little close and a little too aggressive trying to block it. Smart play by the junior from Barton College. Now it's McCroy on top. Holden out of the game. Hayes hasn't gotten going. 0 of 1. Hayes has been scoring in double figures consistently this year. Mosley, corner, McCroy coming off the bench with a spark. No, tipped around and a rebound by UNSW. The Seahawks quickly across half court. Ingram looking for a teammate. It's Ponder. He cuts across. Kick out Fleming. Jumper from three. Rattles in and out. A rebound by Marvin King Davis. 6.55 first half. A good job by Marvin. He was out on the perimeter hedging and immediately on the shot by Fleming's filtered in. Got a big rebound for Delaware. Now Mosley inside with the spin on the basketball. Got the foul. And will shoot a free throw when we come back. It's 30 to 13. Finishes right or left handed to get the ball up to the rim. A lot of players cannot do that. He absorbs it with his inside part of his body and then gets the finish. And Mosley finishes on the three point play, a 64% free throw shooter on the year. 6.45 remaining in the first half. Hens down by 16. They have trailed by as many as 19. In fact, on that last possession, they were down 19. Mosley gets three to cut in. Now it's Tally offensively for UNSW. Drives inside, kicks it back out to Flemings. And he's short front rim. Ball coming our way. McCroy saves it back to Pinkard. Nice effort by the walk-on McCroy. Well, nice play by McCroy. Throwing the ball to a teammate, and that's very important when you go to save the ball, especially your defensive end. Now it's Tally a little too close for comfort. He gets whistled for the foul. We'll see Champ Mosley to the free throw line for a 1-1. One one. Ninth foul on UNW. So Delaware will be in the double bonus the rest of the half with... 6-16 left, and we'll see Denzel Ingram come in as the foul on Tally was his second. Well, this is the kind of whistle, meaning the way the game is officiated, that Delaware clearly needs. A lot of close calls, they, they are the right calls, and I think they've even had a couple other ones that the coaching staff and Coach Ross have been working the officials on in and around the basket. But for those two-hand and single-hand checks out on the perimeter, if they detain or make a player have to change his angle they're going to call those and i think the officials have done a nice job on that for delaware's from delaware's perspective mosley three in a row for the free throw line as he made a pair there and delaware down 14. unsw has made six of their last eight from the field they've got the basketball and it's ingram to ponder corner fleming he drives and balls come our way bill quick hands nice job and a nice chest pass to mccroy you were you were on it well, that's what happens when you get caught up in the air any place, but especially underneath the basket. He had nowhere to throw it, and he throws it out to us in press row. You're very humble. Just a wink uh, is all it takes from, from Bill Harmon. Ready and on the spot. Mosley with the drive, taking it to Brian. Off the window, off the mark, but Jeffers is there. Crashing inside and getting to. I talk constantly about how Mo Jeffers can find other ways to score. Offensive rebounding, especially hustle plays like that, are very important for him. Hopefully that helps him get going. Hens on a 7-0 run. Now a miss by Flemings. Rebound by Kasman Hayes. Hens down by 12. Did not lose composure. And now, little by little, are looking better on offense. And if they get a bucket here, possibility of getting within single digits. Here's Mosley inside out. Dribble right into Bryant. And he traveled. That's turnover number 10 on Delaware and turnover number 4 on Champ. I know Champ will see that on the tape. There are times when both he and Corey Holden want to get to the basket, and they do that very well. But when you have a defender already stationed right in front of you, positioned there, you're better off either maintaining your dribble and withdrawing the ball, taking it out of the lane, or pull up and at least fake that short shot. Now pass inside for the foul line. Bryant entry inside to Grundy. His shot blocked. Now it's Hayes. Five minutes left first half. Pinkard inside to Jeffers. Too high and a turnover. It looks like Jeffers. 
Yeah, a little bit of contact on his back as he tried to jump for it. Brian was there, but no whistle, and yet another turnover for Delaware. You are right about that, though. Brian had a hand in the back, and that should be called a foul. I'm not sure the pass would have completed anyway. Pinkert's got to throw the ball directly to Mo Jeffers when he's posted up. Just way too many turnovers for Delaware. Down 30 to 18, but currently on a 7-0 run. And it's Grundy trying to change that with an elbow jumper right side, missing strong. And Mosley using some muscle again this time on the defensive glass. It doesn't show up on the stat line, but Mo Jeffers has done a couple great things recently. That was a terrific high-hand contest of the shot to force the miss. Mosley, excuse me, Mo Jeffers with a pass and another turnover, another steal. Pinkard riding Bryce down the floor, and he gets called for the foul. This is uh, some of the worst... Job. This is one of the worst jobs taking care of the basketball that I have seen a Delaware team in recent memory. Well, Scott, as a coach, the good news I can tell you is they can improve on all these. It isn't the great play of UNCW. It's just some careless passing or bad utilization of the type of pass, the bad choice. But a good foul there by Pinkert on the floor. And the quick inbound goes to Mark Matthews. He's come off the bench and really been a spark. He's got 10 points. He averages four. And it's 32-18, to 18, that basket ends a 7-0 run for Delaware. Mosley with the basketball. King Davis into the game for Mo Jeffers, trying to give him a breather. McCroy with it now, gets to the paint, pass to Mosley. Delaware, 12 turnovers in this basketball game. As they trail, 7 on the shot clock. King Davis turns, fires over Bryan, and Bryan got a piece of the hand of Marvin King Davis. It'll be MKD at the free throw line. When we come back, 3.45 remaining in the first half in UNCW Blue Hens Sports. Marvin King Davis at the free throw line. Delaware has to win this final 3.45. That's an understatement. There's no question they do. They've got to be able to identify the matchups. I thought that was a good job by Mosley, even though it was late in the shot clock, to realize that Brian was on Marvin King Davis, and that's a matchup win for Delaware. They've got to try to exploit those advantages and a good job by Marvin turning into one of his favorite shots at turnaround jumper Brian not very intelligently fouling him. and King Davis connects on the free throws he's got eight points and Delaware trails 32 to 20 Corey Holden has been out the last few minutes of game action ponder with a great move that's a fifth year senior move as he took it between two Delaware defenders and scores hands down 14 but Holden had been out the last few minutes Brian with a silly foul as Mosley brings it up the floor Migraine again kept Corey Holden out. He missed uh, the start of the Columbia game. Ended up having an excellent game on the road against Columbia with a migraine headache and uh, has been worked on on the sideline over the past, uh, I would say, five, six minutes or so. Now ready to check back in. It's Corey Holden. We hope those migraines are, are going okay for him. Well, a nice job uh, by the training staff of Delaware to get Holden uh, back in. And also, Corey's a very tough competitor. He, you know, does not want to stay out. I know when he came back in the Columbia game, he did a fantastic job up there on the road. A, a very tough competitor. I had a really nice chat with him before the game, and we talked about some adjustments that he might make in the game, and I've already seen two of them that we discussed. So this is a very intelligent player who wants to improve, knows that he needs to, and I've, uh, I think he's very receptive to what the coaching staff has tried to work on with him. Well, I'll tell you what will help the team come back in a game that they were down 19 is making free throws, and Delaware made two again as the ball knocked out of the hands of Bryce. Now Delaware on offense. Can get it within single digits with a three. Corey Holden from the sideline right back in. Right side, trying to get inside to Marvin King Davis. He turns, fires, and it's off the right side of the rim. And a rebound by Bryce for UNCW. Hence, just to finish my thought, 12 of 13 from the free throw line. And now a foul by UNCW in traffic. Now that's a call that I absolutely love. Not because it was for Delaware, but I think too many officials in today's game give the advantage to the offense when they're completely out of control. As a position defender, you can actually be moving and still get the benefit of the doubt and draw an offensive charge. That was an excellent call, and I think one that needs to be called more often. And one, if it didn't go Delaware's way, would have been the third on Corey Holden. So a break for the Hens. Down 34-22. Uh, Delaware, I think, should be happy to be uh, within this amount and still have 230 to cut in the way that they've played in this first half. Holden traveled with the basketball as his 
foot looked like he slipped trying to stop on a dime along the baseline. So another turnover, 14 in the first half of the half. I think you make a great point. I hate to always talk about statistics, but only down 12, and we have 13 turnovers versus three. But more importantly, one of the keys to the game, a team that really doesn't attack through the big men, they have 20 points in the paint, and that's got to decrease in the second half if Delaware wants to have a chance to win. Matthews feeling good off the bench. Why not? Another three from Mark Matthews, the freshman from Fort Myers, Florida. 37-22 now as Mosley gets inside. High to McCroy. One dribble to pass to Hayes. As Holden must not have been feeling well as he's back on the bench. As they go inside, King Davis working hard for position. Devontae Haycock, the 6'7 freshman, called for his first foul. Double bonus for UNCW as Delaware will shoot two. And that's where Delaware has to take advantage of this foul situation in such a negative way for UNCW. And they've earned it. They uh, do a lot of touch fouls. The game's been closely called. Delaware's got a recipient here of, I think, a very well-officiated game. They've got to be able to convert from the foul line. But going inside to Marvin King Davis, being played behind by a shorter player. Many times these players try to displace you in the post, move you off the post with a forearm, and that is a foul. And this crew has done a nice job of continuing to call and make the right calls in the right situations for Delaware. Holden coming back in. Paul Lowry and the training staff doing the best job that they can to make sure that Holden is available. Free throw good for Marvin King Davis. He's got nine. And second free throw. Back iron no good. Matthews with the rebound for UNCW. 37-23 is the Seahawks lead. They led by 19 with 8.22 left in the first half. Here's Ponders play well off the bench. 111th career game for him. Clemens drives. Harris cuts him off. Baseline right. Kick out. Ingram. One-handed pass to Ponder. Ten to shoot for Craig Ponder. Thought about a three, and in doing so, thought a little too hard and traveled with the basketball. Well, Delaware went to a zone. A smart move for two reasons. One, the zone attack by UNCW has not been very good. And number two, it gives a little protection to Corey Holden, who did a nice job there on the screen by Geddes and forced Ponder into the travel. Delaware. Well, inbound, and we're seeing a lot of substitutions for Monte Ross's team, and we talked about matchups, and he did in the pregame show, uh, going sub for sub with UNCW at times. Pinker checks in, Harris checks out, and now Hayes, King Davis, Mosley, Pinker, and Holden on the floor. Mosley brings it right side, attacking, get us, get a shot, block. By the big man, seven-footer swats it away after his two per game. Matthews traveled with it. And back to Delaware it goes. Sloppy at times for both of these teams, not just Delaware, in this first half. The speed of the game sometimes is what perplexes me and why players try to almost play faster than their bodies allow them. Matthews, who's been on a roll from the three-point line, trying to drive along the baseline, just moved his pivot foot way too early. Holden beats traffic down the floor. Contact and the bucket. Corey Holden to the line. Well, Corey Holden, I think, for a guy that probably feels miserable from a physical standpoint, is doing a really nice job of being cagey in his attack. That time the defender was positioned, but Corey slid slightly to his right and used his right hand on the finish, and the defender recognized that Corey Holden was doing that slid, and that created the foul. A heady play by Corey Holden. Holden, four points, a free throw here. We put Delaware within 11, and he does just that. Perfect form. He's three of three from the strike. Delaware has made 14 of 16 from the free throw line, while UNCW has shot only three free throws. That's, nope. a, that's a theme of the year so far for Delaware. Absolutely. Delaware continues to play this zone. A really good move here by Coach Ross. Fleming, hand in the face from Harris. They work it inside. Get it. Kick out. Fleming. Fires up the three, misses right side, ball tapped out of the hands of King Davis and Geddes, just too tall, the seven-footer, puts it back. Now Geddes falls, and Mosley down the floor, without the shot blocker there, Mosley takes advantage. UNCW tried to press, and, and Anthony Mosley recognized we could go two for one, and that was a great play by Mosley in the open court. Explosive, a great finish as he rises up through contact. Delaware trails 39-28. 13 on the shot clock, 20 on the game clock. Flemings gliding inside. Floater over King Davis is in, and Delaware will have 13 seconds to close out the half. Down 41 28. Mosley with nine gets the cross. Eight, seven for Mosley, top of the key. Here's Holden with five. Now four. Shot over two defenders is good. Corey Holden ends 
the first half. Delaware playing much better the second part of that first half. And they'll take right to left in their home white uniforms with the yellow Delaware across the chest and blue numbers. We are back in action for the second half here at the Bob Carpenter Center. I thought one of the other keys early on in the half. As they go inside to Marvin King Davis, holding, finds the cut again, Tay D. And it's now 41-32 UNCW. A nice set play with Mo Jeffers setting an excellent screen. Mo Jeffers, though, it, it's going to show up on the stat line. has done a really nice job at the defensive end. He's also been setting some excellent picks inside. They go inside to get us working on Jeffers. Moves his pivot, and that's a travel. And, Bill, that other key that uh, you were talking about. I thought the fact that Corey Holden played through his migraine, but also would have been very easy for him to have picked up that third foul. He only has two, and I think that's going to be very important if the game goes on. That was only six first-half fouls. They were in good shape as Holden goes down. There's that third, though. <laughs> Maybe Corey or the officials heard you talking because Holden went down the floor and didn't utilize the jump stop crash right into UNW player. He's a smart guy, though. He can play with three. Yes, he can, and he's going to have to. But more importantly, if he'll learn at times to pull up a little short and shoot that mid-range shot, now the defenders won't position themselves so close to the basket to draw the foul, and he'll have better accessibility to the basket. That's the first on Delaware this half, and as I mentioned, third on Holden. Bryce misses a jumper. Mosley, a rebound. Fifth rebound for Champ Mosley. Now he's bumped on the other end. And uh, Champ can really go. When he grabs a rebound, you better not blink because he can get right down the floor. He has terrific acceleration with the ball. We talk often about how people are fast and quick, but to be able to do that with the ball and dribbling it uh, is a real skill and a big advantage. And found the floor on tally is his third. Now King Davis looking for some space to get a shot off. Can't do it. Back tap. Jeffers to hold it. Now a bounce pass Mosley along the baseline. Tally in defense, and Mosley going to pull it back out on the wing. Crossover. Mosley inside. One-handed pass to an open haze for three, and he misses. Jeffers tips the rebound, tracks it down, pokes it to Holden. Holden will slow things up between the circles. Now we'll go. A two is, I believe, blocked. It should stay with Delaware as UNW got a piece of that. And the officiating crew going to get together. The initial signal was UNW basketball. And I believe that Holden would not have missed by that four. And I think rightfully so, they're going to look at the monitor. Oh, I think this is really good officiating. Andrew Mariotta, Alvin Cox, and Guy Pagano, I think, have done an outstanding job this evening. And they're going to Delaware is going to be awarded the ball as they well should. Corey Holden saying, hey, I'm not missing a shot like that. I'm not that far off the mark. Inside to Jeffers as it does go to Delaware. Gettys with the foul, but Jeffers too much. Too strong, and the Hens continue to cut in this UNCW lead. And this is all about the intensity of Maurice Jeffers. I think sometimes Maurice, to people that don't know him, kind of plays with a, a passive face. But I'll tell you, inside this young man is a real competitor, and I've watched him improve. I know he's been struggling a little bit offensively, but I don't think he's let his defensive rebound and your defensive play ever let down. He's really been the key here to the second half, half of those offensive tip backs and then a terrific play there to score over the much bigger Geddes. Jeffers makes the free throw. He's made now seven free throws in a row going back to the start of conference play. Didn't get to the line last game. But the Hens, within two possessions, it's 41-35. to 35. UNCW, Flemings driving, stripped by Hayes, and they'll call a foul on Kasman along the baseline. Well, Kasman was in front of Flemings, who was very quick with his explosive first step. I think Kasman might have been better served because he had Maurice Jeffers there positioned to affect the shot, if not block it. They'll say ball on the floor as Flemings not quite starting his shot for him. As our hands all access watchers can see Hayes strip Flemings and go out of bounds. Of course, you can catch all the action on 94.7 WDSD, iHeartRadio, and online at BlueHens.com with the video feed. Jimmy Smith and his crew doing a great job. And Chuck Ogbodo, not so great. A traveling violation as it goes inside to the junior. Ogbodo at 6'9", 230 is a better athlete than he's shown this evening. But a good job of, with the front Blitz hedge by Maurice Jeffers to send the ball away. And then a good find of Ogboto, who should have been able to finish that, but playing too fast, move the pivot foot. 
Here's the full court pressure by UNCW. Delaware uh, has struggled at times with the pressure, but no problem there. Mosley by himself breaks it, loses grip of the ball, though. Comes loose. Hayes, shot blocked by Ogboto. Now the other way. Holden's got to be careful. He's the only man back. Can't foul, and that allows Ingram to go to his left and utilize the layup. And a good call by you, Scott. That's exactly what Holden should have done. The chance of him stopping that play even by trying to draw a foul were very minimal. Now Mosley, Delaware, four on two. Jeffers to the rim, and he's fouled by Ogboto. A nice effort, Jeffers, with the leaping ability to get himself into the defender and back to the free throw line. I love the way Jeffers has started this second half. And a little bit of that is his teammates recognizing that he's locked in right now. Mosley had a chance to drive, but he drew the defender to him and drops the pass off to a trailing Maurice Jeffers, and I think that's one of the best places to play in transition is the trailer. The defense almost never accounts for you. You can find your fit and or your angle going to the basket, and Maurice is pretty heady at that, and a nice play by Mosley to find him. And they gave the foul to Denzel Ingram on a reach before Agbodo really slapped the ball out of Maurice Jeffers. Jeffers misses the first free throw. Now made seven of his last eight. Improving big man from the free throw line, and he goes 0 for 2. But Marvin King Davis, an offensive board, keeps the ball in Delaware's possession. 43 35. They trail 17 24 left. Right elbow, it's Jeffers to Kasman Hayes in the corner. Design play inside of King Davis. It was looking like it was going to be successful, but Flemings with the kick. That's a zipper cut, a diagonal screen there that Marvin King Davis has scored on many times. They Compress the defense down, and then they back screen, or excuse me, side screen on the far elbow. A really nice ball cut there by Marvin King Davis to create the foul. King Davis gets the inbound, right elbow, looking to pass out. Can't get it to Holden. Takes the dribble and finds Hayes. Hayes calling for Corey. Can't go to him again. Lockdown defense by Denzel Ingram, the transfer from Charlotte. Now Hayes inside contact and Kasman will go to the free throw line for two. An opportunity to get his first points. He's 0-5 from the field. The way UNCW is playing the ball screen enables Delaware many times to reject it. They try to fight over the top. They haven't done a good job of sending the ball to the screen. And a very smart play by Kasman there to not go towards the screen. Start there and then reverse created the foul. And after... Jeffers missed a pair. Now Hayes at the free throw line where he's 69% on the season. He's made now 17 of his last 21 over the last five games. He has 7 of 10, a career high against James Madison. Misses his second. King Davis, another offensive board, keeping the possession in the hands of Delaware as they trail 43-36. Jeffers. Same zipper cut inside to King Davis this time. Bounces off C.J. Geddes and gets it off the window. Delaware within five. Well described, Scott. The same play they ran before. A nice pick by Corey Holden on that. And Marvin King Davis using the backboard with that baby jump hook. Here's Ingram. A jumper for two. That's what Delaware wants. Miss. Back tap to Ponder. Ponder inside out dribble. Right side. Lefty off the window. That's a smooth move for a player who's a veteran for the Seahawks squad. Ponder, who did not start tonight, I think has been very efficient. Four for five from the field. Has had a couple great drives down the lane. That time used the backboard on the right-hand side. Being a lefty, had to turn back into the defense. 45-38. Delaware with the basketball. 16-11 to play. Mosley brings to the left side. Jeffers posting up. Instead, they go to King Davis. Top key. He wants to pass. 11 to shoot. One dribble and a flip to Corey Holden. And now a three-second violation called on Maurice Jeffers. That's turnover number 15 on Delaware, second of this half. Marvin King Davis did not have the right angle, but I think if he had reversed the ball quickly to Mosley, he would have been able to drop it in. Maurice was working hard inside on Matthews, had the advantage. Delaware just couldn't find the right angle to get him the ball. Fourth turnover on Maurice Jeffers in this basketball game. As Flemings left open off after a screen, and he makes Delaware pay. Five straight for UNCW as Delaware got within five, now down ten. Fleming who had missed his first four three-point shots. He gets the ball very high over top of his head. Not perfect form, but that time he caught it in rhythm, was able to complete it. At the elbow right side, Jeffers into Holden, a great entry, and Corey is fouled by Craig Ponder. You know, it's usually Corey Holden, the point guard, with a great pass. And Anthony Mosley create, which is a great idea, but you've seen us, to, or you've heard us describe two set plays where they've 
Bump picked on the weak side for Marvin King Davis. They tried to go high and low on a nice set play to Mo Jeffers, though it did result in a turnover. It was just a bad selection of the angle. And then a nice offset screen freeing Corey Holden up. So I think these are really good ideas. What it's also done is reduced our three-point shooting. We haven't been very accurate recently. We're only, we've are only we only taken three three-point shots on the evening. I think it's a good move right now. And Delaware only a 31% shooting team from three, so that's good to shoot a few less. Holden made one of two as we get back in action. UNCW drives the baseline, hanging his Ingram, kicking out Fleming. He made a three from that same spot, misses this time, but the poke out goes to Ponder. Mosley overruns the rebound corner, and another make from Mark Matthews, a new career high for him. He's got 16. Well, Matthews was able to set his feet in that left corner, and right now he's in great rhythm, so Delaware's got to do a little bit better job and be more conscious of where he is, locate him sooner, and try to at least force him to dribble the ball before he shoots. Delaware nearly another turnover as Mosley's pass was deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Delaware, but they'll have to inbound in front of the UNCW bench on this full court pressure. Mosley gets it across the timer with Ponder riding him. And he'll be able to run the offense between the circles, brings to the right side. Flip is to Holden, around the perimeter, now inside the paint. Over Gettys, tough angle over the seven-footer. Touches nothing, now Ponder is on the run. Ahead, it's Flemings. He stops back to Ponder, puts it on the floor. Corner, there he is again, Mark Matthews. Can't connect that time. The tip out to the shooter. Matthews over Jeffers inside. Gettys offensive rebound. He's fouled as he falls away, and C.J. Gettys will go to the free throw line. Unfortunately, Delaware was not able to secure the defensive rebound, and at times we have a habit of tipping the ball out. I'm not a big fan of that. I think it most of the time yields a ball to the the offense. We're better off trying to take your body to the ball, but a good job there by UNCW. I've got to give them credit. They moved the ball around to Matthews, who has been their hot shooter. Jeffers is second. A 73% shooter is Gettys. The seven-footer. Interesting uh, year it was for 2015 for Gettys. He was suspended in conference play last season. Did not attend the team's trip to the Bahamas. If you're going to act a fool, do it after the team gets back from the Bahamas, for goodness sakes. He did not meet team expectations. He was in the doghouse, was not injured, just did not play the first nine games this season. Now a starter and back to making an impact, hitting free throws. And increasing the UNCW lead to 53-39. It's Mosley the right side. Pinkard and Harris in the game as Jeffers and King Davis get a blow. Mosley brought it inside. Nothing there. Brings it back out. 14 on the shot clock. Mosley trying to drive. Flips to Holden. Holden changes speed. Changes direction inside the paint. And misses the shot, unfortunately, for the hands. Here's Ponder on the other way. UNCW going fast. And Ponder into a defender. Gets fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Ponder, unfortunately, from Delaware's perspective, realized that they were not set defensively, only two back, and he just attacked, and it, it created the foul. At the other end, Geddes, even though he isn't very mobile, just by being so big at seven feet and also a wide girth, he forced Holden to take an improper angle of the basket, try to switch hands, and really didn't have much chance of success on that layup. Geddes, 275 pounds, a seven-footer from Finlay High School. And then after the hold and miss, it was Ponder who makes the first free throw and knocks in the second as well. Lead built up now again for UNCW back up to 16. It's 55-39. Deller having trouble with the full court pressure. Holden dribbling himself across half court, playing with a migraine headache. Into the paint, kick out. Pinker, hands need it from Devon, and Devon can't give it to him. A miss from the right side, and Pinker continues to struggle from three he was 0-4 against northeastern ponder on the other end slicing through and making it easy with a layup in transition delaware used a lot of energy to come back and cut the lead now they've re-expanded i think a timeout here would be in order if nothing else just to let Corey get a little bit of a breather 14 to 1 run for unw over the last three minutes of play we're at 13 7 in this first half, Pinker thought about a three, puts it on the deck inside. Runner, soft touch, misses. Harris keeps it alive. Back to Pinker, power dribble. He goes up and misses again. Pinker tips it to Hayes, and Hayes will get fouled on his way up. In all of that, Barnett Harris looked like he was not Barnett Harris. So we hope the best for Barnett as Kasman Hayes was fouled after all of that, and he misses the first free throw. Delaware shot 
so well in the first half. They were 12 of 13 at one point. Now they're 3 of 8 this half from the free throw line. And just 3 of 12 from the field. Hayes misses them both. And you just can't come back in basketball games if you're not going to make your free throw. Unfortunately, missing the front end of a one-on-one or missing both of a two-shot foul acts like a turnover. Let's not count it, though, because there's already 15 of those. No reason to add to that. That's why I use the operative word, acts like. But a great point you make. Now Potter in and out. Offense rebound. Flemings gets pinkered in the air. He'll foul Flemings. And right now, and we've, we've seen this from Delaware in conference play this year. And unfortunately, last time out, we, we saw it. There are portions of the game where it looks like heads are hung a little low and the energy is not there. And UNCW, full energy, taking advantage. You're right about that. And we did expend a lot of energy trying to fight back there uh, until about the 14, 15-minute mark. I thought we were really playing more engaged both ends of the court. Uh, Holden was getting anywhere he wanted, making plays for himself and his teammates. And that's where I think sometimes you may just have to force yourself to take a timeout, even though it might not be by the book, but sometimes by the feel of the game. Hey, we've got to keep this close. We've got to fight for every possession. We can't play too fast. And speaking of too fast, Bill, Mosley with a push-off racing down the floor. Another turnover. Five for Mosley as he's called for the offensive foul. That's the sixth on the Blueheads. And the Delaware... Trailed by 11 at the half, cut it to 5, and now a 16-1 to run by UNCW has them up 20 with the basketball. Their largest lead of the night, Fleming for 3, makes it, oh, it was halfway down, he missed it, popped out. C.J. Geddes, though, with the putback, makes it 22. Here comes Holt. Delaware's had trouble securing the rebounds with two hands, and that loose ball. UNCW has been, been the beneficiary of a number of those Gettys there in perfect position laid in on the weak side. Here's Holden, left side. Gettys defending. Holden, kick out Hayes for a three, and he knocks it in. Caspin Hayes with the make and a timeout by head coach. UNCW, and right now Delaware defensively uh, just a struggle. We've got to play better on the glass. They have 18 second half, uh, second chance points on nine offensive rebounds. Their overall shooting percentage is 51%. We've got to do a better job of closing off dribbling angles. Ponder's been able to get into the basket. We cannot get frustrated here. State of the game plan. Chris Cheeks presented them with a great one. We've just got to do a little bit better job, and now we're in zone. We've gotten out of our man-to-man. A little bit of foul protection and also forced this team to shoot from the outside where they are not a great long-range shooting team. There's Tally showing just that, missing on the three. And back to Delaware it goes. The Hens were able to cut a 19-point lead for UNCW at the end of the first half by going into zone. Mosley going into the UNCW defense. His shot blocked. Fleming's on the other way. Holder with the three fouls. Can't play any defense. And the run out gets UNCW up 63-42. Anthony might have been a little out of control and getting, again, a little too deep. You have to pick your spots when you're going to attack the basket. That mid-range zone on the foul line area is a much better place to operate. Holden. Passes to no one in particular, a cheerleader on the other side of the baseline. As he drove baseline for Delaware, the ball rolled all the way down the floor. Now the head is covered. Truly free checking with no minimum balance and no monthly fee. Call Dexday Federal Credit Union at 302-571-0522 or visit Dexday.com. Back in action here, UNCW with the basketball and the lead. Delaware going back to some man-to-man here. They need to exert a little bit of pressure and make sure that UNCW does not get any easy looks. And that wasn't uh, too difficult of a jump shot from Craig Ponner. Just walked to the foul line, jumped it from 15, and knocked it in. 65-42 is the lead for the Seahawks. Now a 22-4 run. As the whistle blows, King Davis got a dunk for show, but it will not count. Delaware showing, I think, a little bit of frustration for really one of the first times. Uh, down at the defensive end, Ponder is a lefty. You've got to be sure he never beats you with his left hand. He does not drive or shoot very well going to his right. Just kind of a breakdown in the defensive game plan. Marvin King Davis at the other end. We've got to be able to run some set plays again, kind of get back into that rhythm. Our guards at times have gotten a little too deep, so they've got to be just a little bit more resistive to taking that where it works once in a while. How about make it work every time you go? but be a little bit more circumspective when you do it. 
King Davis had the one and one and made them both. Here comes Bryant, and King Davis waiting for him. Takes the charge, and back to the hands it goes, down 65-44. I'm always stunned when a college player in particular with a 21-point lead attacks when there's a defender perfectly stationed. Just withdraw the ball. You don't have to score so quickly or pull up and shoot the mid-range shot. There's so much of the game today, as you and I have talked at times, of getting to the rim and dunking or shooting the three that nobody makes those intelligent decisions in the mid-range area. You don't have to shoot the ball every time, especially when there's a lot of clock left. And an easy call for the officiating crew as King Davis was waiting for Bryant. 65-44. Delaware still trails, though, as Hayes trying to change that with a three, missing, and a rebound to Matthews. It goes for the Seahawks. That's a play Delaware likes to run, especially for Kasman on the right side of the court. A dribble exchange handoff. He uses the handoff man as a screener. He rises up. That shot just came out of his hand a little flat. Just missed off the front of the rim. Tally driving. Wraparound. Ponder has played well. He's got the basketball now. Six of eight is Craig Ponder. Now it's Tally inside Bryant. It is as easy as I've seen it for any team against Delaware for UNCW. Another layup, and now the lead 67-44 Seahawks. Just too many available driving lanes for UNCW, and they haven't done a great job of reversing the ball. They've kept the ball on the same side of the court. Delaware should be able to defend those plays a little bit better. Holding with the basketball. King Davis, catch, shoot over. Brian rattles her through. King Davis, 17 points, through, along with six rebounds for the senior. Marvin does as good a job as anybody in our conference by squaring up his body with a nice high release. A very cagey player knows how to get off his shot against taller players. 8.48 to go. UNCW in control as they work the ball around. Delaware in the zone defense. Ponder trying to shoot Delaware out of it. Misses on the three. That's what Delaware wants. Three-point shot for UNCW. Now Mosley down the other way. Inside shot blocked by the trailer. Brian poked around. And the Seahawks go in the other direction. Tally leaves it for Brian. And Brian changes the direction of his layup and gets it to drop off the window. Delaware with some speed on the other end. Down 69-46. Holden will bring it back out. Corey has eight points on two of seven. Hayes is one of seven. And they go inside to King Davis. Good! And the foul on the continuation. King Davis with a chance to get to 20 points. He's got 19 after that one. That was great poise by Corey Holden as he turned the corner. He was not in a hurry. Gets to that mid-range area and drops off a perfect bounce pass to Marvin King Davis on a little back door off the, off the slip screen. Those are the plays where I think Delaware feels to me like they're in a little bit more control, not trying to play too fast. It's impossible to come back 21 points in two minutes. I think you just try to play in two or three minute increments, try to score three or four points advantage in each one of those. Uh, we get going a little too fast at, at this point, especially with a team that likes to play an up-tempo game. King Davis misses on the free throw, but he's got 19 on 6 of 9 from the field. And the Seahawks with a 6 and a 9. 69, 48 is the count. Not what you want if you're a Blue Hens fan looking for your first conference win of the year. Ingram with 3, and he drills it in front of the UNCW bench. It's now 72-48. A lot of teams do not like to screen the top of zones. UNCW likes to do that. That drew Kasman Hayes off that bump screen. He then has to rally to the shooter just a little too late to close him out. Holden inside, dropped it for his teammate, but he was fouled. Contact, and the foul should be sending Corey Holden to the free throw line for a pair of free throws. In the conference in terms of double-doubles, but also his style of play. Marvin never gives up. He always plays, I think, very intelligently. He plays to his strengths. He's a very efficient player. He's 6 for 9, but also 7 for 9 from the foul line. An excellent rebounder, a tenacious rebounder, a solid defender. But what I like is that he's never out of control and always takes a good shot. As he came back from break, UNCW, after two free throws from Corey Holden, quickly breaks pressure and gets an easy layup. Just too many layups today. UNCW has scored. Holden trying to get a layup himself inside close, and he bounces it in. Off the back iron, front rim, and through. It's 74-52 now. Delaware trying to force some turnovers. Fleming across the timer on the right side. 7.07 left. Ponder will control. Well, UNCW is probably pretty good at breaking the press because they, they press, press so much against, themselves, right? so they're 
practicing against themselves. And, of course, with a short bench as it is, very difficult to press. Delaware not known for that recently, but we had some fantastic comebacks two years ago with our full-court pressure. Gaddis inside, was calling for the basketball, six on the shot clock, got the basketball, drew the contact, and yet another layup for UNCW. 44 points in the paint for the Seahawks, and we'll talk to Coach Ross about that after the game. That was his key. Make UNCW shoot jumpers, keep them out of the paint, and clearly UNCW up to the challenge. Gettis makes the free throw, and it's 77-52. Trey Grundy will check in for the Seahawks. 11 players have hit the floor for the Seahawks today. Unfortunately for Delaware in several games this season, certain players have really exceeded their scoring average. Geddes not even averaging three points. He's at 13. Matthews has 16 points, only averaging four. And that's when these lesser players, once in a while you know the star is going to be able to have a great game and you try to do your best. But you can't let these, what I call, uh, role player types have games like that. They've got to be better defended. They cannot beat you. You've got to make their best player beat you and then not allow these young men to go off. King Davis has gone off. He's got 19. He's at the free throw line after there's a whistle on the floor, but double bonus sends are in it. King Davis with 20 points after that make. Double digits in the first eight games of the year. Now 11 of 15 games. He's reached double figures, averaging 13 points per game, third most on the team. 8.7 rebounds per game. Leads the team in that category. Seven double doubles on the year. Needs four more rebounds to get his eight. He had eight and eight last game against Northeastern. Marvin's got that really good mid-range shot because he squares himself and has a high release, but he can also go inside as well and finish. Tally whips the pass with his right hand to Geddes, and Geddes scores on the inside. Jeffers tried to draw the offensive foul. No whistle, and after the layup, because Jeffers uh, flopped, or at least drew contact and fell, Geddes landed around Jeffers, tripped over him, as now is holding his lower back. He's he's up there pretty high. That's a long fall for a seven-footer. And uh, he'll possibly have to check out. No foul play, just a big guy falling over another big guy. We've had some very hard hits on the floor. I think he tripped over Mo Jeffers, who was on the floor with a no call on a good either no side. Call, by the way. Yes, it was. Holden will inbound with his team down 79-54. There's still 6.30 left in this basketball game as Holden throws it to Trey Grundy. Problem with that, Trey Grundy plays for UNCW. Misses on the layup, does Grundy. And back to Delaware. Here's Mosley trying to beat everybody down the floor. He's fouled on the dribble. It'll be on the floor, but still a two-shot foul as UNCW has been in the double bonus for a while. When you're inbounding the ball against pressure, especially with a side denial, very difficult with a taller player defending to lob the ball up there. Many times the ball can be tipped or actually stolen outright, and that's what happened. Holden's pass, uh, probably not the best one to throw in that situation. Mosley's free throw is good. Champ, another double-figure scoring game. He's got 12 points. He had 13 points against Northeastern. As a starter, 103 points in 10 games coming in. He only scored 15 points in the four games as a non-starter. He has really uh, been just such a, a great surprise for this Delaware team. I only say surprise because uh, with Corbett at the beginning of this year uh, available and Devon Pinkert available, he didn't think Mosley was going to be in heavy rotation as he is. And boy, is he taking advantage. He makes both free throws and a traveling violation on the other end. Gives it back to Delaware. 79-56. Six minutes left. Good defense on that possession by Delaware, forcing Grundy into a bad position. A nice double team on the right side on an isolation play. Marvin King Davis rotating over as Mo Jeffers fed Grundy into the double team and created the walk. Mosley between the circles. See if Delaware can run a set. They came out in the second half running set plays, and we haven't seen much as the half has gone on, and Delaware has continued to trail by a large margin. King Davis inside to Jeffers, right block, triple team, pass out to Hayes. Hayes with seven on the shot clock. Now five to hold and catch, shoot three, around and out. A rebound by Flemings for UNCW. A tough shot there by Corey Holden. Ingram with a nice high hand contest. It was forced because we had dribbled the ball down into the dead corner and picked it up, and that created the tough angle, the tough shot 
for Holden to try to complete. Holden and Hayes, a combined four of 16 in this basketball game. Your number one and two leading scorers on the season as Devontae Kaycock gets inside from the right low block and turns around, scores 81-56. Seahawks one away from their season average of points with five minutes left. King Davis, jumper, good. Nothing but that for King Davis, and he's been a bright spot. That was a great set play call. You had Mo Jeffers posting up low. They sagged off of Marvin to help on the double team if he were to throw it from the high-low position, and he can make that shot. That's a great call for Delaware to run a play they should utilize and have utilized quite often this season. Trey Grundy, way off the mark from three, and it goes in the hands of King Davis. Seventh rebound for him. Running the floor is Jeffers. Gets it down low, right-handed hook, no good, and a foul on the floor by Kaycock going for the rebound. He'll put King Davis at the free throw line, where he is 9 of 11 in today's game. Mo Jeffers has impressed me this evening with his defensive play, his rebounding, offensive tip backs. He had one possession where he secured two offensive rebounds for Delaware via the tip. And to be able to run the floor, Mo Jeffers is quite fast, very athletic for a 6'9 big man. I think Delaware's got to look for him more often in transition. The key for a big man to beat his man down the floor is the first three steps. You don't have to be faster than the other man. You just have to be quicker. In those early steps, you gain an advantage. Your teammates can look for you. A nice reward there. Even though he missed the shot and Marvin got the rebound on the weak side, that was a good play by Mo Jeffers. King Davis makes both free throws. He'll be replaced by Pinker. Needs a blow. He's been working hard. You can see the sweat dripping off of King Davis as he makes both of those free throws. It's 81-61. to UNCW going to win this basketball game, but I just want Delaware to finish strong at least as Tally gets across half court. And he'll get it back to the state logo. Center circle. They'll work some clock here as Pinker defends Jordan Tally. All-rookie team selection. Last season for UNCW, their first since Adam Smith in 2012. Smith transferred to VTech, now at Georgia Tech. And Tally can't make the free throw go through, but it's Mark Matthews with the tip in. Matthews was not blocked out. Delaware has not done a good job on their defensive glass tonight. Now Mosley stripped. It's Matthews again racing down the floor, lays it up too strong, but Kaycock is there. That's a tech as he pulls his chin up above the rim and that's a freshman mistake and uh, not what you want to do if you're a freshman fighting for minutes yeah we'll get possession as well a shame uh, that delaware going to to fall to unw in this one it's the start of delaware's first three game homestand uh, of the year and an opportunity to impress some fans and maybe have them come back uh, hopefully the fans do come back but uh, certainly after seeing uh, this effort by the, the hens uh, some disappointed uh, blue hens faithful uh, that Delaware couldn't pick up their first CAA win of the year. I'm sure they'll turn around by Thursday and then next Saturday as well. But an opportunity lost, I think, for Delaware to start this home trip. Holden made the free throw. And now Delaware with the basketball, 85-61. King Davis, he's played so well, 25 points for him. Pinkard in the corner, guarded by Matthews. He dribbles into the paint, uses his right hand, misses. King Davis can't secure the rebound. Now he can, and he's fouled. What an aggressive play. There's one guy that's never going to give up. I don't think anybody on this Delaware team has, but King Davis, for certain, grabs his eighth rebound. He's got 25 points, and he's now only six away from his career high of 31. King Davis did a great job there of cycling back into the basket. As Devon Pickard went by him, he didn't presume that he was going to be able to make that shot. And not that Pickard wouldn't have, but it rolls off the rim, and he's very tenacious. Marvin uses his body extremely well. I think he has... A terrific control of it, but he also is long-armed and can go up and snatch a rebound out of someone else who's taller or better positioned. King Davis was averaging just 11 points per game over this six-game losing streak coming in. Well above that after two free throws made good, 27. Now for King Davis with his team down 85-63. Approach at three minutes left. Ponder going to take some air out of the ball. Craig Ponder started 45 of the last 46 games coming into this Bob Carpenter Center game. Did not start tonight, but impact was felt. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you play the first jump or not. As the pass goes in the corner and in and out on a three-point try from Ingram. Rebound by Pinkard. Up the floor he goes with 245. A pass to Holden. Open look for him from three. That's off the side of the rim. And a rebound by Kaycock. So Tally will walk it up. The sophomore from Richmond, Virginia. And UNCW just has to 
handle the basketball for a few more possessions, and they'll get out of this road trip up to this area, Towson, on Saturday or on Thursday, Saturday at the Bob with a one-on-one record. They worked around the perimeter. Ponder with it, crossover on Holden, and he tries to pass out. Mosley, quick hands, gets the steal. It's two on one. Mosley takes it himself, uses the right hand, and finishes after the turnover. Well, Mosley has continued to impress me in the open court. Uh, explosive player who can finish well above the rim, but what I like is his ability to change hands and kind of pick the right one to finish with, depending on where the defender is positioned. 16 to shoot, 153 to play for Jordan Talley and his UNCW squad. We'll see. Uh, un- I'll say fortunately as the walk-ons come in because you always like to see them play. You don't like for Delaware recently to be in situations where the walk-ons get in at the end of the game as Ponder misses on a three. King Davis, one rebound away from another double-double after he secures that one. 90 ticks left. Anthony Mosley with the basketball. His pass is to Pinkert on the wing. Driving. Pinkert. Cross court to hold it. Jab step. Kick out. Mosley thought about the three, doesn't take it. Still 13 to shoot. King Davis, his shot is good. And King Davis has 29 and 9. What a game for the senior. Great ball movement there. Delaware reversed the ball twice. Yields a wide open shot. Not quite wide open, but a tough shot by Marvin King Davis, who's definitely found his rhythm tonight from the top of the key. One minute left, UNCW up 85-67. If King Davis can make another shot and grab another rebound, he'll have a career high in points and another double-double. See if he stays in with six on the shot clock. And UNCW can't get a shot off, falling away out of bounds. The shot goes that direction. We'll see McCroy, Lochner, and Lock in the basketball game with 41 seconds left. Hey, just want to say real quick, it was a pleasure to uh, be accompanied by Irish Shepherd here today, one of our friends that we've met along the way pursuing a, a career in broadcasting. Uh, he was a part of the UD Center for Disability Studies, and I was able to meet him uh, through that a couple of years back, stayed in touch. Uh, he is uh, such an inspiration. He's got a show Fridays 3 to 4, the Irish Shepherd Show. I don't usually plug other radio stations, but 91.3 FM. On Fridays, uh, 3 to 4, Ira Shepard, uh, a great guy, big sports fan, so tune in to his show as Delaware turns it over here. But always wonderful to see him and his aunt, Cynthia Thomas, in uh, attendance as well. 27 ticks left after what was Delaware's 20th turnover of the game. UNCW can dribble it out as the shot clock is unplugged. Disappointing start to conference play. The Hens played the big three. Hofstra, James Madison, Northeastern. You thought that perhaps a win available at home against UNCW, but not the case. The Seahawks come in and just outplay Delaware, and they'll get an 85-67 win over the Blue Hands. We'll talk about it in the American Spirit Federal Credit Union post-game show here on 94.7 WDSD. We'll be back in on with final thoughts and recap as the Hens fall to five.